we're going to have the reading of the law. Okay, Brother Julius. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember, the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Let's go in Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, read verses 12 and 13. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 22, read verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh the lie. I want to thank Brother Julius for reading the law. And we're going to get to this lesson, sisters and brothers. You know, because some, when people come into the Word of God, somebody tells them, well, everything going to be sweet and nice. It's going to be, everything going to be glorious, sunshine. It's going to be everything. And ain't nothing going to happen to you. You're just going to be a happy-go-lucky person. Then once you start dealing with the Word of God, some drama fall on you. And now you're wondering, what's going to happen? What's happening? What's going on? Maybe I shouldn't be here. <clears throat> but the Lord called me to put this lesson together to let you know how this thing will go. And so when things happen in your life, once you turn to the true and living God, then you will understand that this is one of the things that God do with his servant. In fact, the title of this lesson is The Servant of God, Tried, Corrected, and Blessed. The Servant of God. Tried, corrected, and blessed. Because once you come into this word, sisters and brothers, you know, the Lord will let Satan tweak you a little bit. But if you are truly a servant and you have faith that God will deliver you, then Satan tweaking mean nothing to you. You will survive it. Now, you know, Satan going to try you because he tried Jesus. Yes. Now, we're going to start this in Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke, the fourth chapter. So if Satan had the audacity to try Jesus, you know that he will try you. But then you use Jesus as an example because after all, he is the captain of our salvation. And who is the captain? He is the one that leads, sisters and brothers. Now we're going to start this in St. Luke, the fourth chapter, and we're going to read, start reading at verse 1, 4 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, 
returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. That's after he got baptized. When he got baptized, he come up out that water and he went, went right on to the wilderness. Go ahead and read. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. See, now he was tempted of the devil. Remember now, devil, Satan knew who Jesus was. There wasn't no thing about he was wondering. He knew he wasn't no regular flesh and blood man. He knew where he came from. Yeah. He knew who he was. But still, once he put on his flesh and blood body, he figured, I can get him. So he tempted him. Go ahead. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, uh -huh. command this stone that it be made bread. Now, Jesus didn't tell Satan he was the son of God. Satan knew he was the son of God. Right. So he said, now, if you be the son of God, you know, you got all this power. You don't have to be hungry. You can turn this stone into bread. What did Jesus say to him? Go ahead. And Jesus answered him, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Now, you letting him know, hey, it is written. He knew it because he is the one that dictated the writing. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That's what you live by. Go ahead and read. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Go ahead. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee uh -huh. and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, to whomsoever I will, I give it. Now, Satan and Jesus know that the devil wasn't lying because he gave him latitude to offer you colonel stuff to serve him. But God knows that if you are truly his servant and you believe in him, no matter what you offer, you're going to do the same thing that Jesus did. You're going to turn it down. What did Jesus say? Go ahead. Verse 7, if thou would therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Uh -huh. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Go ahead. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And, and that lets you know right now, when he said it was given to me, Jesus didn't call him a lie. He gave him something to bargain with. But Jesus turned him down. It's all that simple. Where he said, Look, get behind me, Satan, yeah. for it is written. You know, you know that Jesus is always talking about what's written. Yes, sir. He didn't have to say that, but he said that for our benefit, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. It is written, sisters and brothers. So Satan offered Jesus the whole world. Because Satan can bless you too, but that bless come with a big price. Heat, heat. And that big price is the lake of fire, sisters and brothers. So if you're doing well, we're going to show you. That don't necessarily mean you've been blessed by God. So now, but Satan cannot force you to sin. He can only entice you and persuade you if you are not strong by appealing to your Lush. Make it plain. Make it plain, Brother Booth. Find out what you really want, and he come out and he put that on the table. Like when Jesus was hungry, hadn't eaten in 40 days, the man was real hungry. Who? Oh, I know if I tell him to use his power to make bread, he'll do it. Uh-uh. So now, being that he can't persuade, he can't uh, force you to do nothing, he going to find out what you lust after, and he is going to try and throw that in your face. But then, let's go into James, the first chapter, and show you what the Lord had James to write, sisters and brothers. The Lord have all the cases, all of the roads covered. All you have to do is do what Jesus did and deal with what is written. That's why he said, it is written, yes. sisters and brothers. Yes. Because the Lord told you that he would do nothing but reveal his secrets to his prophet. <clears throat> when you get people that want to say stuff that you can't find in prophecy, then you have to beware of those people because maybe they're the ones that you have to look out for. James, the first chapter, we're going to start this at verse 12, 1 and 12. Okay, go ahead. Let no man say when he is tempted. 1 and 12. James 1, and we're going to start reading at verse 12. Yes, sir. Okay. 
Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Go ahead. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, uh -huh. which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Now, he let you know. Look, if you endure it, then you got eternal life coming to you. If you endure, and, and you survive this. So you're blessed. Go ahead and read. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Uh-huh. For God cannot be tempted with evil. See, the people tell him, well, you know the Lord to tempt me. God said so he can't uh, be tempted with evil. God ain't going to uh, uh, trot no woman by you that you ain't supposed to have. God ain't going to put big money, make, uh, 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 it's easy for you to steal big pieces of money that you ain't supposed to have that you didn't earn. God is not going to tell you to lie on somebody to uh, when you can do it and enhance your well-being. He ain't going to do that. He is not tempted of evil. Go ahead and read. Neither tempted he any man. No, go ahead. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Look, every man is tempted. When he's drawn away with his own lust, and he is enticed by his lust. Go ahead and read. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Uh-huh. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So now when your lust take advantage of you, it brings forth sin, sisters and brothers. And how did sin, death get into the world? Through sin. Adam sinned against God, and death followed it. Same thing now. Nothing has changed. Lust bringeth about sin, and sin bringeth about death, yes, sisters sir. and brothers. We're going to go to Jeremiah, the 12th chapter. Jeremiah, chapter 12. But look, sometimes people prosper by accepting Satan's offer. And people do it. Just like he put that offer on the table to Jesus, he'll do it to you too. And some people have prospered because they accepted it. That's what Jeremiah was talking about here in Jeremiah the 12th chapter. Because he asked God about that. Because he saw it and uh, he wanted to know, how is this, master? But people, Satan come, put that offer on the table. If you serve me, I give you the whole world. It's mine to give. God gave him material stuff to bargain with. Because God made you a free agent, and he wants you to have the ability to make the right choices and make it. Well, you have the ability, but he wants you to have the faith to make the right choices. But everybody don't do it. Some people take Satan up on this offer. And Jeremiah asked the Lord, how is this? We're going to start at that verse 1. Jeremiah 12 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Righteous art thou, O Lord, uh -huh. when I plead with thee. Uh huh. Yet let me talk with thee of thy judgment. He said, now righteous, O Lord, when I plead with you, yet let me talk with thee of thy judgment. Go ahead. Wherefore do the wicked, the way of the wicked prosper? Why do the way of the wicked profit? Prosper. I know that you are righteous, God. I know that your judgment is right. Yes. But I just want to ask this one question. Why is it that the wicked, the ways of the wicked prosper? Go ahead and read. Wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously? He said, why are all these people happy that deal very treacherously? These people break your laws and do anything, everything contrary. Yes. Why are they prospering? Why are they happy? Why is it? that they can commit all this treachery and prosper for them. Well, we're going to find out, sisters and brothers. We're going to start this, look, let's start looking at Psalms chapter 73. You want that verse 2? Well, uh, verse 2? Yes, sir. Okay, read it. I'm sorry. Verse 2, go ahead and read. Thou hast planted them. He yeah. said, look what he said now. You have planted them, God. Go ahead and read. Yeah. They have taken root. Uh-huh. They grow. Yeah, they bring forth fruit. Uh huh. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their range. He said, look, you planted them, they take root, and they prosper. So you are, you are uh, uh, near in their mouth but far from their mind. So I just want to know, Master, why is it that these people prosper? Do everything wrong. They got plenty of money. 
got the best of food, got the best home, best car. Even their children look like they are pro prospering and doing well. Why? Well, we're going to pursue why. Now let's go into Psalm chapter 73. Psalm chapter 73. Because you, everybody knows somebody, some people that's doing well and they do everything wrong. Don't care nothing from nobody. Have no love or no concern by nobody else but themselves. But still, look like what they hand, put their hands to, prosper. But we're going to find out why Jeremiah asked that question, and we're going to let the Lord answer the question. Jerem, uh, uh, Psalms chapter 73, Psalms chapter 73, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Truly, God is good to Israel, uh -huh. even to such as are of a clean heart. Go ahead. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well not slipped. Now, he said, look, God is good to Israel, especially those that do right. Let's have a clean heart. Yes. He said, but as for me, my foot was almost gone, and my steps had well near slipped. Go ahead and read. For I was envious at the foolish uh -huh. when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He said, that's why my feet almost slipped, because I saw these wicked people was prospering. And I started to envy these people. Yeah. I started saying, look, they doing it. God ain't doing nothing. And God is blessing them. Hey, maybe I should start doing it mm. too. He said, but my feet almost slipped. It didn't slip. Go ahead and read. For there are no bands in their depth, uh -huh. but their strength is firm. Go ahead. They are not in trouble as other men. Uh -huh. Neither are they plagued like other men. Uh -huh. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. So look, they ain't like other men. They don't suffer like other men. They doing well. Look like everything good happened to them. They prosper. Therefore, they get all proud and violent. Go ahead and read. Their eyes stand out with fatness. Uh huh. They have more than heart could wish. He said, you know, they have done well. They've gotten fat and prosper. Even their eyes stand out with fatness. They got more than your heart can wish. The Lord, you have really blessed them. Let's skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. And they say, how do God know? Go ahead. Is there knowledge in the most high? And they start to question the knowledge of God when you try and bring God to him. Look here, I did this here. Why are you going to bring God to me? Did God do this? I did this with my own hand. But go ahead. Behold, these are the ungodly Go ahead. who prosper in the world. Uh -huh. They increase in riches. Go ahead. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain uh -huh. and washed my hands in innocence. See, that's why he says foot almost slipped. Because he looking at all these wicked people prospering in the earth. He says, so I have cleansed my heart for nothing. That's yeah. what in vain means. He said, but his feet almost slipped. He said, I done washed my hand in innocence. I have avoided breaking the law. But I'm looking at these people prospering. Go ahead and read. 14. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. Uh-huh. If I say I would speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. He said, looking all day long, I have been plagued and chastened every morning. I'm looking at these people, and I'm, but I'm going through all of these changes, yeah. and ain't nothing happening to them. Verse 16, go ahead. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. He said, look, and, and, and I'm looking at all this here, and I'm seeking God, ain't nothing happening. So this is too painful for me. These, the wicked, everything is working for them. But then there's something about this at the end of the line. Go ahead and read. What uh, verse? 17. Go ahead. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Until I went to the sanctuary of God. I went in this book and I found his word. Then I understood therein. Go ahead and read. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Uh huh. Thou cast them down into destruction. And so what's going to happen in the end? So they're in slippery places now. They don't know it. They're doing everything wrong. But everything is working for them. He said, but you set them now because they are going to be destroyed. They're getting all theirs now. But the day going to come. When payday arrives, and the payday is never going to go away. What is payday? That is the lake of fire. Yes. Let's go into the 37th chapter of Psalm. Psalm chapter 37. Because Jeremiah asked that question. You know, I know your judgment is right. 
But I just want to know, why is it that the wicked prosper? Look like everything they lay their hand to, it happened. But your servant is getting it in the name. But the Lord's going to clear all this up. 37, Psalm chapter 37, we're going to start reading at verse 35. Psalm 37 and verse 35. Okay, go ahead. I have seen the wicked in great power uh -huh. and spreading himself like a green bay tree. You know, if you ever seen a green bay tree, you got a whole, it's big old robust tree. Yeah. Big limb that's spread everywhere, covers all the area, pushes every other tree out the way. Go ahead and read. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. He said, yet <laughs> he passed away, and then and his empty was spot. His, his spot was empty. All of a sudden, what happened to him? Go ahead and read. Yeah, I saw him, but he could not be found. Uh huh. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Now look, he said, I saw for this wicked, but he couldn't be found. But mark the perfect and upright man, for the end of that man is peace. Go ahead and read. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. But the transgressors going to be destroyed. All of them together. Go ahead and read. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. Uh-huh. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He now, in now, the end of the wicked is going to be the wicked gonna be cut off, sister and brother. But the salvation for the righteous is going to come from the Lord. What verse was that? That was the middle of 39. Go ahead. He is their strength in the time of trouble. That's what happened. When you get in trouble, the Lord started to pull you out now. Pay attention. He will pull you out, but you have to keep the faith. But if you're wicked, the Lord got one place for you, and that's destruction. Go ahead and read. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. So the, the righteous, when you look at the wicked, don't let that pers persuade you to try and do what he do to receive the same thing that he received. What the wicked have done, he has taken Satan up on the offer that he, ma that he made to Jesus. Teach. Teach. But Jesus turned him down, but they didn't, and the end of the, at the end of the road is the lake of fire, sister. But the righteous, the Lord going to get them out of trouble every time. But the wicked, when they prosper and remember, Satan is the one. He said, look, I can offer you this world because it was given to me to offer. Jesus didn't call him a lie. Nope. Let's go into Psalm chapter 92. Psalm chapter 92. Because Jeremiah asked a good question because I didn't ask my, I used to ask that too. This, this guy, he do everything wrong. He, uh, uh, he destroys people. He don't care nothing about nobody, but still he prosper and he get away with everything. We have seen that with the previous president we had. Right. Do everything. He got so emboldened in it, he said he could kill a man, shoot a man, and, and uh, uh, what's that in the middle, is this New York street down there, in the middle of a, uh, this, whatever the street was in New York, and get away with it. His wickedness had consumed him. And he actually figured, can nothing happen. And you look at people and you start thinking, why are they getting away with it? 92 and 5. 92 and 5. Go ahead. Oh, Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. Go ahead. A brutish man knoweth not, neither do a fool understand this. So your works are very deep, and your thoughts and your word is very deep. A brutish man knoweth not. Neither does a fool understand this. Go ahead. When the wicked spring as the grass. When the wicked spring as the grass. And when all the workers of iniquity do flourish. And when all the wicked workers of iniquity do flourish. It is that they shall be destroyed forever. It is that they shall be destroyed forever. This is what you got to remember. So you won't look at them and envy them and start to mimic them because whatever they bless them to get is, they're going to pay for it forever. That's why I've seen a lot of people lying on the word of God. We're going to go to 107 chapter Psalm, Psalm 107. Peace, brother Boo. I've seen a lot of people and ministers lying on the word of God for whatever little uh, uh, ministers they can extract from it. 
And my thought is, I hope you live well. I want you to get everything that you have sold your soul out for because you're going to pay for it forever. Because that is what the Lord has caused his servant to understand. Being cut off forever, that's a long time, man. Forever. Psalm 107, and we're going to start at verse 17. Psalm 107 and verse 17. Because, sisters and brothers, it's, it's easy to get caught up in the wrong because you envy somebody else unless you are a true servant of God. If you're a true servant of God, you don't, you don't envy nobody, whether they're living, doing good because they are doing right or whether they are doing good because they made a covenant with Satan, which is with eternal death. No matter how you look at it, you don't envy them. It's just like somebody get promoted on the job. If people get mad, well, you know, why does he get promoted? It should have been me. Uh-uh. Well, why is it that you figure that you should be promoted instead of them? Instead of you saying, well, praise God. Yes. Congratulations, yes. sister. Yes, sir. Congratulations, brother. I am glad. You understand? And genuinely mean it. Peace, brother Bruce. Make it plain. Because you cannot hate somebody for getting, having what you want. If you do, then you are wicked. Psalm 107 and verse 17. Okay, go ahead. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Now, this is what it says. Fools, because of your sin and because you're breaking out of law, are afflicted. That's what Israel had. The whole nation broke God's law and God afflicted us and told us what he's he going to do to us. Threw us in a great captivity. Yes. Yeah. Made us slaves and servants all over the world. Yes. And we are mad with the slavers and the ones that we are serving instead of being mad with our forefathers, which God put a offer on the table. Serve me and you're going to be the top nation on the earth. Oh, that's simple. And your position will be on the top only. You would be the financier. You would be the one that set the whole pace of the whole planet. We wouldn't accept the offer because we didn't want to keep his commandment. So now, things have befallen on us. Why? Because of what is said right here. 17 verse. Fools because of their transgression yes. and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Nobody got us in this but us. Skip down to verse 19 and go ahead. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. Uh -huh. And he saved them out of their distresses. Then once you cry and you truly cry to the Lord and you repent, then he'll save you out of your, out of your distress. But go ahead. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. What did he send to heal them? His word. His word, sisters and brothers. When the Lord, when the Bible tells you to let the Lord direct your step, he is doing it through his word. So he sent his word. And you start, start walking in his word. Then the Lord will pick you up. I hear some, a lot of Hebrew brothers come to me saying, brother, we got to get together and, and, and help this Hebrew Israelite. Even the ones that don't know. That's how we're going to do that. Well, we can do, I said, look. The only way you can help this Hebrew Israelite, the ones that's informed and the one that's not informed, these are the children of the slaves, is to teach them what thus said the Lord and teach them to keep God's commandment. If they start to walk in that word, then the Lord will deliver. Oh, this captivity is not going to be over with, but the Lord said he'd be a little sanctuary yeah, to did. you. That is right. And these nations that you are captive of. Because that's how he healed you, through his word. What verse are we? That was the end of verse 20. Go ahead. Oh, that's the end of verse 20? Yes, now sir. let's go into Job, the 33rd chapter. Job chapter 33. See, this is what people don't understand. The Lord give you his word. That's why he talk about Israel being sick. And he said, is there no bomb in Gilead? Yes. What was the bomb? His word, sisters and brothers. That is the medicine. 
if you deal with this word and walk in it the way he said walk in it, then the Lord will heal you. He'll get you out of distress. Yes, sir. He will prepare you for immortality. But you have got to listen to his word. Because if you don't, you're going to watch the wicked and you're going to envy the wicked and you're going to follow them to destruction. Job chapter 33. Job chapter 33, and we're going to start at verse 14. Job chapter 33 and verse 14. Well, that's, that is the way, sister and brother, to be delivered and do what thus said the Lord. He's still in the blessing business. We're going to start at verse 14. Okay, go ahead. For God speaketh once. Uh-huh. Yeah, twice. Uh-huh. Yet man perceive it not. Uh-huh. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men. See, he said God speaketh once and speaketh speak twice, and man don't deceive it. So he'll, he'll speak to him in a deep sleep. Now, this he do, God speaks to you in a lot of ways, but this is just one of the ways he's doing a, steep, a deep sleep. Go ahead and read. And slumberings upon the bed. And slumbering upon the bed. Go ahead. Then he openeth the ears of men uh -huh. and sealeth their instruction. Then he'd open up your ears and he sealeth in your instruction. He's not going to just snatch you out of trouble. He will show you how to come up out of trouble on your own. And how do you do it on your own? By walking by the road map that he's laid out to you in his word, yes, sisters sir. and brothers. Yes, That's how the Lord will deal with it, by sealing in his instructions. What verse was that? We had 17 now. Go ahead and read. That he may withdraw man from his purpose uh -huh. and hide pride from man. Now, he going to seal in his, in his instructions that he might draw you from your pur purpose and get that pride out of you, which yeah. is going to bring you down. He do that by his word. That's why he instruct you through his word. Go ahead and read. He keep it back his soul from the pit. Uh-huh. And his life from perishing by the sword. Uh-huh. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. He said, look, by his word, he keep you back from the pit. But then he'll chastise you when you're not doing it right. To keep you from being destroyed. So he is chastened. Also with pain upon his bed. Yes. And the multitude on his bones with strong pain. That's just that's just timing from the Lord, sisters and brothers. But why is he doing that? Because he's trying to save you. We can't read, we don't want to read all of this, but skip down to verse 27 and continue and see why he is doing this. Verse and how the Lord works. Go ahead and read. He looketh upon men. Uh huh. And if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not. Go ahead. Now I look on you if you confess that you're a sinner. Yes. Go ahead. He will deliver his soul from going into the pit. He's going to deliver you from going into the pit. And his life's your seed of the light. And the Lord, and then the Lord is going to show you his word, and you shall see the light. Even the light that leads to salvation, sister. It's true. But sometimes he had to chasten, chasten you. Sometimes he had to hurt you. Sometimes he had to make you real sick to get you out. That is right. God worked these ways. Go ahead and read. Lo, all these things work at God oftentimes with man. Look, it's, you read this whole thing. It lets you know there's a whole lot of pain, a whole lot of suffering, sometimes a whole lot of slapping down, a whole lot of chastisement. So often God used these things. Yes. With man, go ahead and read. To bring back his soul from the pit. To do what? To bring back his soul from the pit. To bring back his soul from the pit. To be the enlightened with the light of the living. To so he can put him on the con on the road to eternal life. So sometimes when we are serving, start to deal with chastisement. That is correction of the Lord if we will be receive correction. Lord worked that way sometime. Let's go into Proverbs, the third chapter. So you won't be thrown off track when these things start happening to you. You say, oh, and then it make you think. You start looking in your, at yourself. Yes. Maybe I'm not doing something right. Maybe I should reexamine myself. 
Maybe I should take a wicked check. I'm a servant of God. Why is this happening to me? But this is the way the Lord operates to keep you from committing suicide, eternal suicide. Otherwise, he's telling you, listen to me. And don't try to lean on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, and we're going to start reading at verse 5. Proverbs 3 and 5. Okay, go ahead. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart uh -huh. and lean not unto thine own understanding. He said, trust in the Lord. Don't lean in your own understanding. The Lord, you see the Lord and give you something that's written in his book and you see it, but well, you know, I don't feel like it. Uh-uh. That's your own understanding. If God says it's going to work, it'll work. Go ahead and read. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Uh-huh. And he shall direct thy paths. If you acknowledge him in all your ways, he will direct your paths. How is he going to direct your paths through his word? Remember, he said he sent his word and you was healed. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Uh-huh. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That's what you have to do. Don't think you're smarter than God. God will deal with you if you're going to commit evil. But if you stop breaking his law, he's going to deal with you in a positive way. Go ahead and read. It shall be health to thy navel uh -huh. and marrow to thy bones. Go ahead. Honor the Lord with thy substance. Go ahead. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. E even the Lord gave a commandment about, about the, what he said with your substance and the first fruit of your increase. He's talking about paying his tithe. You're going to serve God, but you don't want to do nothing pr to promote his program. Well, I don't want to help them. Look, you, this is your Service to God, not to man. If you get a foolish man that misused the, the Lord's money or the Lord's contribution, he got to pay for it. But you've done your part. So honor the Lord with all your substance. Go ahead and read. Verse 10, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, uh -huh. and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Now the Lord telling you, you, you take care of him, he going to take care of you. You find yourself... You take paying your, uh, your tithes and everything and doing everything you're supposed to do with God. All of a sudden, you find yourself doing good. Right. <laughs> what, where did all this extra money come from? Where did this come from? Yes, teach. Because the Lord said, let me direct yourself. If you fall and do what I say, I'm going to take care of you. Go ahead and read. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Neither be weary of his correction. So when you mess up and he starts to chastise you, don't hate it. Don't be weary because if he, as long as he's chastising you, you got a chance. Go ahead and read. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected. Now, and that you need to keep in your mind. When you do something wrong, the Lord slap you down. You don't get up, well, I don't know. Uh-uh. He's telling you, I love you. I'm chastising you to keep from having to destroy you later on. Finish that. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. You know, people don't go and just beat on their kids, whoop them because they say, well, I feel like whooping them today. When you, only when you mess up, that's when you get chastised by your parents. God is the same way, sisters and brothers. Sometimes he lets Satan go and push you. But if you are his servant, and a true servant, he ain't worried about Satan pushing you nowhere where you wouldn't go. So the whole thing is, sisters and brothers, the Lord said, whom he loved, he correct. Whom he loved, he chasing. Yes. Now let's go into Hebrews, the 12th chapter. So when drama starts fall on you, falling on you, you're in trouble. I'll never forget this as long as I live. When we was on 75th Street, a young lady was going to class and she was all in it. Then one time, and then she was missing for a, a minute. Then she came back. She came back to tell me that since I went to the world, stuff that happened to me, I even got raped. She said, I'm through with it. And she walked away. i never forget that. That's when she should have drawn closer to God. i never forget that. Satan warned. Hebrews chapter 12. See, that's why sometimes, sometimes 
uh, 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 you heard it, you, you know, it, it is written, you know, with the increase of knowledge is increase of sorrow. Because you get to see things like that. And the worst part about it, you know what's going on, and you know who was who tweaked her, and he won. The rougher it gets for you, sisters and brothers, if you're a servant, the closer you get to your God. Yes, because the day might come when you have to resist even to your death. Hebrews 12, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Hebrews 12 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. Uh huh. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, he said, look, look, we are, we are, are, are surrounded with all kind of ugly and unclean things. So look, let us resist the sins which so easily beset us. Because, you know, it's easy to turn to sin. It looks like it's, it's, if you just do it, you're going to be all right. He said, but let us run this race with patience. Yes. It might not be good today, but tomorrow might be your day. Go ahead and read. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Go ahead. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Go ahead. Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand on the thr of the throne of God. Look at Jesus. This guy, the one that created everything. Yeah. He's the one that the book said brought the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became living soul. John, the first chapter said, Jesus created it all. Now he gonna come down and he gonna let his creation spit on him, slap him around, and eventually kill him? Yes, he did it. Why? Because he knew if he had not came and died for the sins of the people, the whole creation would have been lost. Yes, sir. Because of what Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. He suffered it. But then why is he now? He's sitting at the right hand of right God. Hand. He's immortal again. And that's what we're going for. Go ahead and read. What verse? Verse 3. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Uh-huh. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Uh-huh. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. He said, look, consider Jesus. Look what he endured. Look at him so you can do the same thing and you won't get weary and faint. And that is, turn away from God. And he said, you have not resisted unto blood against sin. You know, sometime it, it might come to that, sisters and brothers. I wonder if we are ready for that. I would rather die before I sin against God. Peace, brother boy. Peace. Go ahead and read. Verse 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Uh-huh. My son, despise not that thou despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor think when thou art rebuked of him. Now, this is what he read, this is what he said to the people in, in prophecy. My child, don't despise his chastisement because he's correcting you. And don't Faint when he rebuke you. Yes. For your wrong. Go ahead and read. Verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. That covers everybody, don't it? You said the Lord love you? Yes. Then the Lord's going to scourge you at some time. He's going to chastise you when you need it. Because you are his servant and you are his child. Go ahead and read. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. Uh -huh. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth if not? The same thing as your father. If you endure it, then you're going to get rewarded. Go ahead and read. But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. So now, then who is the bastard in this case, the spiritual part? Is the one that lived good and never have nothing happened because the chastisement didn't work on them. Right. Whatever God said to them didn't mean nothing to them, so he fitted them for destruction. 
You don't belong to him. You are a spiritual bastard. Go ahead and read. Nine. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Uh-huh. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? He said, look, our fathers have corrected us, and we honored them. We reverenced them. Wouldn't you much rather be in subjection to the father of spirits? That's God, sisters and brothers. Yes. And live? What life? Not only live in this life, but live eternally. Go ahead and read. But they verily for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure. Uh-huh. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. And what does he mean, partakers of the holy? That we might become God. Yes, sir. He ain't talking about, well, I feel holy and I feel, he is talking about, I'm doing this that you might be partakers. In other words, part, take, take part in the same immortality that I am in. That's what he's talking about, that you might become God. All you got to do is survive his correction and his chastisement when you do wrong. Now, go ahead. Verse 11. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. No, it's not. But grievous. Yep. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. It's, just, it's not pleasant with it when, you, when you're suffering from suffering. But if you endure it, that's by not turning against God and leaning upon God and putting your cares on him. Eventually, he will take it up off your system. Even if you should die from it, you still have something coming that he promised to give you, and that's immortality. That's why you had a word resurrection, sisters and brothers. But you are not going to escape chastisement if you do wrong. Let's go into Job, the fifth chapter. Job chapter 5. And the Lord wants you to know these things. So when this stuff going to happen, it's happened to a lot of people. I've seen it. And a lot of them have fainted, sisters and brothers. They just simply lost the faith, walked away from God. Because things wasn't going the way they wanted. I didn't get the job I wanted. I didn't make the money I wanted. I didn't get the woman that I wanted. I didn't get the man I wanted. And I didn't pray to God and he didn't deliver. Like God, like you, like God have to do something. But God promised you, if you do what I say, I will give you eternal life. Right. That should be enough. But it would be for those that understand that. Because if you don't get eternal life, you're going to get eternal death. And that's the lake of fire. That's a weird death. You can feel it all. That's why I said there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So you got two sides of the coin to choose from, and you can't. Be on the edge of the cone. You're going to live forever. You got to decide what part of the kingdom of God you're going to live in. Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. And we're going to start at verse 17. Job 5 and verse 17. Okay, go ahead. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. Uh-huh. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. That means that he loved you. So you should be happy and don't despise this chastisement because he's doing it to save yourself, save you. Go ahead and read. For he maketh sore and bindeth up. He's the one that makes it sore. Then he turn around and he bind you up. Go ahead and read. He wounded and his hands make whole. He'll wound you and then he'll heal you. Go ahead and read. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Uh-huh. Yeah, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. So he shall deliver you in six troubles. I mean, over and over. And he's saying eventually, the seventh, no evil going to touch you. But you have to accept the chastisement because you know that you have done this thing wrong, sisters and brothers. Now let's go into 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. And we're going to read one verse, verse 13. Because I want people to, I want you to understand this. Because the Lord ain't going to do nothing to you that you can't survive. Nothing. Romans, the 10th chapter, or 1 Corinthians, rather, the 10th chapter. 1 Corinthians, chapter 10. 
And we're going to read verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 13. Because you need to know these things, sisters and brothers. So when it's not before you, hey, somebody else did it. I can do it too. That's what I tell a lot of young folks. Well, I want to do this here, but it's hard. I said, did somebody have somebody else done it? Yeah, they've done it. I said, if somebody else has done it, you can do it too. Right. Have faith. Find out what it takes to do this and do it. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. Okay, read it. There has no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. There has no temptation taken you, except that which is common to man. Go ahead. But God is faithful, uh -huh. who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. And he ain't going to let Satan take, Frank, tempt you more than you can survive. He know the limitation. That's why he put limitation when he let Satan try Job, sisters and brothers. So he ain't going to let him tempt you with something beyond your capability of surviving. Finish that. But will, with the temptation also, make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. But he's going to always have a way for you to escape so you can bear the temptation. Because the Lord is in the business of saving, not cutting off, delivering, not destroying. So whatever temptation come upon you, it is nothing that's uncommon to man. Yes. Let's go into 37 chapter of Psalm, Psalm chapter 37. He's not going to let nothing happen to you that has not happened to man. He is not going to bring anything on you that have not been escaped by man somewhere in the, in your, in the, in the past. They did it, you can do it. Sometime he try you. And God got all them angels that he use you, but the wicked angel, he used some time to just see what you're going to do. We're going to get an example of that today. But let's go into Psalm chapter 37, and we're going to start reading at verse 23. Psalm 37 and verse 23. Okay, go ahead. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Now, of what, how's it ordered by the Lord? Because you're walking in his word. If you're a good man, a good woman, your steps are ordered by the Lord. Go ahead and read. And he delighteth in his way. Uh-huh. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Go ahead. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. So if you fall, you ain't going to stay down. The Lord's going to hold you up and pick you back up. Go ahead and read. I have been young. And now I am old. Go ahead. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, uh -huh. nor his seed begging bread. Look, what this is what David said. He said, I've been young, and now I am old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, neither his seed begging bread. You walk in the ways of God. He will take care of you and everything that come from you. Peach. This is what... King David said, but David was speaking by them, but that was Jesus speaking by the mouth of David, let, let, letting you know that look. Stay with the Lord. He ain't going to forsake you. You don't forsake him, he will not forsake you. Let's go into Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs 24. Because he said, I have been young and now I am old. There's two things I've never seen a servant of God forsaken. Nor neither his offspring begging bread. That is some real good food for thought, sister and brother. Yes, sir. That should give you incentive to do right. If you do right, right will come to you. That is right. Proverbs 24 and verse 16. 24 and 16. Go ahead. For a just man falleth seven times. And rise it up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Ain't that something? A just man, he could fall seven times, but he's going to get up because he said, I'm going to still serve to God. But the wicked man fall into mischief. Right. In other words, thing to go right for him, then he's going to start doing wrong because he said it's right. It ain't working for me no more. 
Go ahead and read. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, uh -huh. and let th thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Go ahead. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Now, this is a quality that a servant's supposed to have. Even when your enemy fall and drummer start falling on him, you ain't, start to, you ain't supposed to rejoice and stomp the feet and clap the hand, because when you do that, then you become what he is. Then the Lord will draw his hand and stop doing him in. Grieve for the wicked when he, when he go down. And hope that he take, that the Lord can fix it. But don't rejoice. Go ahead and read. What verse? Verse 19. Uh-huh. Fret not thyself because of evil men. Uh-huh. Neither be thou envious at the wicked. He said, look, don't fret yourself because of the evil men. They're doing something. And don't envy the wicked. Go ahead and read. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. Go ahead. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. So because the evil man ain't going to get no reward. This candle is going to be put out. He is going to get to serve a sentence. Even eternal damnation. Unless he straighten himself out. So you can't. Envy the wicked. Let's go into 37, uh, Psalm chapter 34. Psalm chapter 34. The Lord put all his ill because he wanted us to be warned. Don't look at the wickedness that's going on around you. Don't look at the prosperity of the wicked that's going on around you and follow them because you will be destroyed. And when the Lord brings them Drama on you, bring some pain on you, don't lose the faith. Just get closer to God, and he will deliver you one way or the other. Sometimes people get chastised, and they stay close to God. Some of them die, but it is written that sometimes the good die young. Right. To deliver them from the trouble to come. Yes, sir. They've already made the cut. Sometimes the Lord just move them on. Because he know they're going to be in the first resurrection. But sometimes the good die young. To hide them from the trouble to God, from the trouble to come. Maybe something is coming that they can't stand. Make they can't thing. endure. Make so the Lord will fix it. Death is not always bad. It's only bad if you die wrong. That is right. But if you die right, death is not bad because you're coming back on the right side of the kingdom and you will live forever. Well, I said Psalm chapter 34. 34. Psalm chapter 34, and we're going to start reading at verse 17. 34 and 17. Okay, go ahead. The righteous cry, and the Lord hear it, and delivers them out of all their troubles. And that's what you have to do. If you're righteous and you know you walk in this thing, and you're doing this thing right. When trouble come on you, cry out to your God. And he said he will deliver you. Go ahead and read. The Lord is near to them that are of a broken heart. Uh-huh. And save it such as be of a contrite spirit. A contrite mean humble, sisters and brothers. Sometimes things rough. Your heart is broken. But he sees near to you. And he's going to save you. But you got to remain humble. Go ahead. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, uh -huh. but the Lord delivers him out of them all. That you need to remember. Many are the afflictions. Come from different ways. But if you are righteous, the Lord is going to deliver you out of all of them. Go ahead and read. He keepeth all his bones. Uh -huh. Not one of them is broken. Go ahead. Evil shall slay the wicked. What's going to slay the wicked? Evil. Evil. Their own behavior is going to blow back on them. Go ahead and read. And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. And the one that hate righteous, righteousness and righteous people, the Lord's going to destroy them. Go, uh, and, and that's something for you to remember. Go ahead and read. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Look, the Lord said he's going to deliver the soul of his servant. Yes, sir. And none of them that trust in him going to be destroyed. None of them. God's going to save every righteous person, not every other one. Not one is going to drop through the cracks. Let's go into 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. Each. Not one, sisters and brothers. 
So when the drama fall on you, things start happening to you, you just remember, I'm a servant of God. The Lord is going to deliver me out of this thing. And you retain that thought, even to your deathbed. Because the Lord promised he's going to deliver you, but you got to be righteous according to his righteousness, not according to your righteousness. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. Because people, sometimes when they start serving God, a lot of stuff happened to them. Sometimes their family turn on them. Their friends turn on them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you miss out on things that you thought was good because you turn to God. And some people say, hey, this is, this, this is too much to give up. And you go back to doing weak, wicked. That's when you are in trouble. First Peter 4 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Uh huh. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Now, he said, just like Christ suffered, you got to start thinking like that too. That's what he said, arm yourself in the mind. That if I have to, I'll do it too. Go ahead and read. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men. Now, what he said now? And you started suffering? That's because you have stopped sinning and you ain't going to no longer live in the lust of the flesh. Like maybe a lot of people that's been around you, you've been running with. Go ahead and read. But to the will of God. But you're going to turn and start living to the will of God. Go ahead. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Go ahead. When we walked in lasciviousness, uh -huh. lust, excess of wine. Revelings, banqueting, and abominable idolatries. He said, look, we didn't turn away from that. In the past, we used to do that, but we ain't going to do that no more. Go ahead. Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. So now when you stop doing all that stuff that they're doing, you stop breaking God's law. Yes. And stuff that a servant of God can't do. When you stop doing it, then they think, hey, He's strange. What didn't happen to him? And then they'll start to speak an evil of you. Oh, he didn't went holy now. Holier than thou. That's what they say. He says, don't take it strange when this started to happen to you. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, uh -huh. as though some strange thing happened unto you. So now when this thing come upon you, your friends turn on you, people don't want to deal with you no more. He said, don't think it's strange because you had to go through this fiery trial. It's happened to everybody that turned to God. Go ahead and read. But rejoice. Inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, uh -huh. that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. See, that's what happened when they beat Peter them for speaking, calling on the name and teaching yeah, the name of Jesus. Peter them went by and they rejoiced because they know then that they were doing this thing right. So you appreciate the word of God. You're a minister of the most high. Yes. Yeah. And everybody loves you at all times, especially in this world. Yeah. Then you better look at yourself. Because remember, they crucified your master. They stoned the prophets and persecuted all the ones that were sent to them. All of a sudden now, you're a minister, you're beloved by everybody. You don't, you don't have nothing evil said about you. Lord, said, so you better take a check. What verse are we? We have 14. Go ahead. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Uh-huh. For the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. Go ahead. On their part, he is evil spoken of. Uh-huh. But on your part, he is glorified. And we at the Israel of God get a lot of that, especially among the, wrong, among the Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. They hate the name of Christ, of Jesus. And everything is said about us. But then the people that call upon him from the uh, uh, Sunday churches hate us because we say you got to keep the commandments. So we don't have no friends nowhere. Nowhere. The people that call themselves Christians say you ain't got to keep the commandments. And we say, no, you have to. They hate us for that. 
We tell them you ain't going to heaven. The Lord going to bring the kingdom here. They hate it for that. Sunday's not the Christian Sabbath day. Teach. If you're a true Christian, Saturday is your Sabbath day. They hate us for this. And because we call upon the name of Jesus, they hate us for this. Because we say that God is the God of all people, and he's going to save some of all the sons of Noah that want to come to him. Be they stranger or Israelites. And Israelites don't like us for that. So we know what hate is. And individually, this is going to happen to you too when you walk in the way of God. What verse? We have verse 15. Go ahead. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. He said, now, I want, now suffer for the name of the Lord. Suffer for the name of Jesus. Suffer for doing right. Yes. But don't let none of you suffer for being a murderer. Go ahead and read. Or a thief. Uh-huh. Or an evildoer. Uh-huh. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. He said, don't suffer for that. Because you ain't doing it for righteousness. You're doing, you're getting paid for your deeds. Yes. Go ahead and read. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Uh-huh. But let him glorify God on this behalf. Yes, sir. I mean, if you're a true Christian, you're going to suffer. Simple as that. I mean, a true Christian. Your son.